All right, what's up, YouTube? I hope you enjoyed the hitting tips video. This one's going to be much quicker. It's going to be the pitching tips and pitching strategy video in one. And instead of going into practice mode, I'm just going to hop right into Diamond Dynasty where you guys will probably benefit from that more. Um, going into practice mode for pitching, I don't think it really it does much of a, a service to you. And you're better off just facing the opponent that you're you know dealing with or the CPU. So first, we're going to go into a game mode against the CPU in Diamond Dynasty to show you the different pitching settings that I have used and have had success with. And then I'm going to go through um, some strategies you can use against the computer, and they're going to be a little bit different than the strategies you would use against, obviously, online players and depending on the game mode. So whether you're playing Battle Royale, Ranked Seasons, Events, um, depending on the difficulty, that's going to matter when it comes to pitching as well and what pitchers you use, what you should look for in a pitcher's card, and how you pitch during those difficulties matters. So we'll go through all of that. Okay, first let's go over a couple of attributes that we can look at on a pitcher's card. So what you can look for in a pitcher. And like I said, it's going to depend on what difficulty you're playing in. All right. If you're between like the 500 and 600 uh, or actually 500 and 700 range in ranked seasons, or you're playing battle royale or events, you're going to be on all-star difficulty. And that's going to matter what pitchers you choose. If you're playing 700 to 900, you're in Hall of Fame. If you're playing above 900, you're in legend difficulty. And you can really use a lot more pitchers on legend as it's just harder to hit against um, a lot of pitchers because of the difficulty. But let's just stick with all-star and hall of fame right now. You're going to want to look for the per nines. Okay. And right now I'm in the attribute descriptions and how you can get here is if you're on PlayStation, you hit triangle. If you're on Xbox, I believe it's Y up at the top here when you're in the diamond dynasty home screen. Now looking at this, there's a lot of things you can go through here. It's basically the entire game manual. I don't recommend reading the entire thing. There's a lot of sections in here that will help you out. And um, I'm going to make a video going through all the attributes in one video. But for now, we're just going to go through the pitching attributes. And if you scroll down to the bottom, it's the last item there. All right, so we're going to skip over batting, skip over fielding, skip over athleticism, and go right to pitching. Stamina, It, it there's not much, you know... To, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's just energy. As your pitcher loses energy and get the bar for his stamina goes from green to yellow to red, um, the more the advantage the batter has. As your pitcher gets tired, uh, he's going to start giving up more home runs, more good contact, and uh, you want to take him out, you know, in a in a timely fashion. Hits per nine influences how often batters make solid contact against pitchers' pitches. All right, so hit, hit, hits per nine is directly counteracted by a batter's contact. So contact goes against hits per nine. And then we go down to K per nine. K per nine is counteracted by a batter's vision. So when people are transitioning from All-Star to Hall of Fame or Hall of Fame to Legend and they're having trouble hitting, I usually recommend that they use batters with higher vision. All right, that will help them face the pitchers and have a bigger PCI. So K per nine and hits per nine directly correlates and affects uh, the opponent's PCI and their batter's attributes will counteract the pitcher's K per nine and hit per nine. All right, so you want to look for a good K per nine and good hit per nine. Now, walks per nine or BB per nine, that's based on balls, if you don't know, influences how accurate the pitcher is when pitching. When you're looking to pick a pitcher that you want to have good control with and throw strikes with when you need to, you know, if you're in a, in a jam or you got bases loaded and you absolutely cannot afford to give up a walk, you know, you want to favor pitchers with good walks per nine and good control. So you see right below that control acts as a slight modifier to walks per nine, but walks per nine is the more important attribute. All right. So they control just kind of, um, you know, is a catalyst for walks per nine. Pitching clutch, I believe directly counteracted by the batter's clutch attribute. So some batters right now in the early on in the game don't have great clutch ratings. Some of them have really good clutch ratings. It's up to you if you want to go through your opponent's batting you know, his lineup and look at all their clutch ratings, but I don't, I don't think that's really worth your time. Just, um, you'll know after the first pitch, you can see their clutch rating on the feedback on the bottom left. All right. And then velocity and break, I'm not going to really, um, go into too much. So let's get right into the, the game mode. And actually one more thing too, if you go down here in the attributes, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, it will tell you which attributes have nothing to do with diamond dynasty at all. And they don't affect anything. So it's home runs per nine, which is a pitching attribute. 
And then the other two are uh, position player attributes. So home runs per nine does not matter. It's a simulation stat, meaning it's important in other game modes, uh, such as franchise, March to October, play now, basically everything outside of Diamond Dynasty. Okay, so we don't need to worry about it for looking at uh, pitcher's cards in this in this game mode. All right, so let's hop into a uh, game against the Conquest map. And we will probably have to play on Veteran or Hall of Fit or All-Star. And to make it simpler for you guys, since most of you are probably playing anywhere from All-Star to Hall of Fame right now, if you're not playing the game too much, I'm going to jump to play on All-Star. As you guys might know or might not know, if you want to permanently change your settings for hitting camera views, pitching, you have to do that at the main menu all the way back to the home screen outside of Diamond Dynasty. So you back out, go up to the top right up here where the gear is and it says settings and you want to change your settings in here permanently. All right. Well, if you do it in the game, the settings will reset the next time you hop into a game. Okay. All right. So we got three outs real quick so we can just hop right into the pitching. Now I'm going to go through the settings first. I use pinpoint. Pinpoint is the most rewarding pitching system and if you played the game long enough and you don't agree with that, I, I understand. It has been frustrating sometimes nope, when there's bugs with pitching uh, pinpoint, but I'm going to go through all of them right now. So, um, like I said, pinpoint is the most rewarding, meaning when you mess up a little bit on pinpoint, you generally get the pitch in the area that you want. Now, there's another thing you have to keep in mind, and that is the pitcher's par region. All right. So, the par region is the the area around the ball where the pitch could end up. So this cutter, you see the ball right there. If I throw it perfectly, it should end up in the middle, but it can actually end up anywhere inside or outside that part. No, sorry, inside the par region. Last year, it could have been inside or outside. All right, so now ball, my release was right. not perfect on that pitch, um, but I got him to swing and miss. So that's fine. So you see with different pitches that I'm picking, the par region is a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller. All right, and the other thing that's going to affect the pitcher's par region is the difficulty that we're playing on. So if this were Hall of Fame, the par region would be bigger. If it were Legend, it would be even bigger. It would be the biggest it can be for each pitch. As your pitcher loses energy and confidence, that par region is also going to get bigger. One way he re uh, loses energy, obviously, is by playing. And then the other way he loses confidence is um, by balls put in play specifically for hits, especially home runs, lose a lot of confidence. And he can gain that confidence back by getting swings and misses. Let's go to meter. All right, a lot of people start out on meter. I used meter for a while, was able to get to World Series using meter. Um, it's not like you have to use pinpoint in order to, to win games. Um, just because a lot of the top players use pinpoint doesn't mean that you have to in order to win, okay? It is possible to win with other pitching That's modes. Right. Um, some people use pure analog. Actually, a lot of top players have done that before, too. All right, so when you're pitching meter, it's a three-button uh, input. So you're clicking the pitch, clicking once. If you aim for the front where the yellow or orange area is, you're trying to aim for more accuracy. If you're aiming for the back of the meter where it's red, you're aiming for more effort, which basically means more velocity, more pitcher effort. All right, and then obviously the last input, the third time you click the button, is going to be you trying to... Uh, time up that meter on the back swing of it, or the you know when it comes back to hit that yellow line. All right, if you hit that yellow line, it should be a perfect throw. It should throw exactly where you want it to, unless you bring the meter all the way to the red for more effort or more velocity. Um, a lot of times, if you're trying to throw a dot and you're trying to get a ball right where you want it to go, you want to throw that ball in the yellow and then try to hit the yellow meter on the way back. All right, so yellow is for more accuracy, red is for more effort. All right, so now that Zach Wheeler is in the yellow in his stamina bar or energy bar, I'm going to go to the bullpen and change or warm someone up. All right, so I'm going to warm up with two pitchers, a righty and a lefty. That's typically part of my strategy. I just like having the option of putting in a righty or a lefty uh, for the purpose of matchups. Now, if the opponent has a lineup that doesn't really constitute you needing to do that, then, you know, you can put up two righties, two lefties, or just pitchers that you're comfortable using in certain situations. All right. The other thing you got to do is when you're playing an opponent online, you got to pick up on their hitting tendencies. All right. How often are they taking pitches? How often are they taking close pitches? Um, at what part in the count are they swinging? Are they swinging early and swinging a lot and often? Um, you know, so that's a part of what pitchers you're going to put in and how you're going to pitch to them. All right. Now, let me keep explaining meter. Um, you know, obviously, I went through the, the basic mechanics of it. The red is for more effort. 
and the yellow is for more accuracy. The more accurate throws, the more times you hit the yellow bar on the way back, basically the bigger the little yellow bar will get uh, once you have enough confidence. So I know that's kind of tough to understand real quick, but basically if I hit that good enough times, that yellow meter in the middle will get bigger, so it'll be easier to hit on the way back. Before we go to the next game, I'm going to change to pulse pitching. We'll just see what that looks like and um, go through that before we go to the next game and go through another set of pitching. So pulse pitching, I'm going to throw this pitch so my clock timer doesn't run out and get I get a ball. Um, uh oh. Okay, so pulse pitching, you see, it's uh, it's instead of three buttons that you're pressing, it's just two. It's the pitch and the pitch again. All right, so if I do a sinker here, I'll hit circle, and you obviously just want to make sure the the bigger circle lands at the you know uh, tangent with the smaller circle where the par region is. All right, so sometimes if you want to use pulse pulse pitching and help yourself outside. like with the timing of it, give yourself a count uh, of how you're gonna land that pitch in there so you just kind of let it go like maybe two or three times or if you think it good enough you can just do it once two and oh. like that and you still get a good timing as long as you're kind of keeping your head and stay focused Outside, that's a ball. um and the reason zach wheeler's throwing balls right now is because he's losing energy so his par regions are getting a lot bigger it's very hard to you know throw a strike all right so we're gonna go over one more before i go over pinpoint we're gonna go over pure analog all right pure analog is you pick a pitch and you see the meter at the top there, you can, you know, it moves left to right. That is basically just the target. And you're going to start the right analog hey. stick, okay? One ball, By the way, one the right analog stick I use for pitching, I don't have a control freak on it. I know I talked about the control freak in my hitting tips video. I don't use a control freak for pitching. All right. So if I want to throw this up and away, it's going to move that target to the left. Now, as yep, I come up on out. the analog stick, I want, need to move this right analog stick towards the target. So either left or right or straight up the middle if I'm throwing right down the middle, which I'll do now. So I just basically pull the right analog stick down. And when it hits that yellow bar right there, I just bring it right back up. Okay. It's pretty simple. I don't find it easy to use at all. I can never get a perfect release on it. Um, if you do get good at using this, this might be your go-to. So I would try it out. Uh, you saw that pitch there. I couldn't get it to the left a little bit. It seems to be a little more sensitive to me. And if you practice any pitching mode enough, you'll get the hang of it. I promise. Ball. But the reason I Ball use one, pinpoint no is because I practiced it enough. And it's going to be weird to use for you at first. Ah. But let's hop into that right now after we do one more batter on pure analog. See if I can get this target. Now, the other thing you should realize with this is you don't have to hold the analog stick down. You just have to bring it down once. All right, you can let go of it until you have to bring it back up again. Ball. All right, so I didn't really have a good control on that because I was holding it up to the camera. All right. He's out. So next inning, we'll go to um, Pinpoint. All right, so here's Pinpoint. Pinpoint, you, you have to practice. It really only took me like two or three days to get the hang of it. And I can tell you the first day was very tough. Um, it was difficult. Once you get the hang of it, it is, I, th I think it's the best. Uh, so basically, you're tracing the pattern up in that top circle after you pick your pitch to the exact pace that the preview is showing you. All right, so this cutter right here wants me to go over and up and then down. Now, there's a couple different ways people like to uh, use Pinpoint. There's some tips and tricks you can use. One of them is actually, instead of tracing to the top circle and then holding it there until you have to bring it down, they'll let it go down to the middle and then bring it down to the bottom. All right. Oh, one. So one thing I should describe too is, let's say I choose this cutter. You basically want to meet, there's going to be three circles. All right. all right. So you have the big circle, then there's two circles. All right. You have the tracer. And it's going to have a smaller circle that is going to close. And you want to meet the tracer at the point that that circle is closing. So if you need a little bit of guidance on the timing of which you should pull the analog stick up and over, you want to make sure that you're looking at the top circle and getting to it right as it's closing and then waiting for the bottom circle. And sometimes you don't have to wait that long 
because the tracer moves dependent on the pitcher's windup. If they have a fast windup or they're pitching very fast out of the stretch, and pitchers do have different uh, paces between the windup and the stretch, then that circle will close quicker, especially at the bottom. So you're bringing it to the top when that closes, and then you're waiting for the bottom one to close. It's, it'll, it'll shrink, shrink, and shrink, and then you just want to snap it down. So you're actually snapping down the analog stick to meet that circle right when it closes, and that's how you get the timing down. All right, the actual tracer, you'll notice once you start using it, it's fairly easy to get the motion down. Um, you'll get the accuracy on that pretty close every time, as long as you just stay focused. And like I said, you can let this drop to the middle again, and then that little line will either turn gray or yellow. That doesn't matter. Don't worry about that. Oh. It does not affect the accuracy of the pitch. So that's one little tip you can use if you're not getting used to pinpoint. Now, I'm going to bring in a lefty to show you something very important with pinpoint that you're also going to have to practice and remember every time you switch pitchers from one arm to the other. It's reversed. So fastball, it doesn't matter because it's straight up and down. All right, we'll let that be a hit because I threw it right down the middle. And the pinpoint tracer is going to go in the opposite direction, except for the fastball. The fastball is just always straight up and down. Now, if you're ever struggling, don't... Don't get tilted, and what I mean by that is don't get impatient if you're giving up hits and runs and just pick a pitch and throw it. Watch the tracer if you're not throwing at your pitches to remind yourself the pace at which you need to throw. So I'm going to click my pitch. I'm going to watch the preview just so I know what to do in, far, in terms of timing. I'll watch it twice. And I got that timing yeah. down pretty much nearly perfect. I was 100 oh and, one. and 0 .01 on the timing and then 0 degrees off, so I got that perfectly. If I just do it real quick like this, it's a lot of times I don't throw it perfectly and then you saw right there I had some yellow and I threw it right down the middle. All right. So the more you do it, the better you'll get with it. But every now and then you need to stop and remind yourself to watch the tracer because it really helps you understand the timing and feel the timing of the pinpoint preview. All right. So multiplayer modes, we go to events. If you haven't used events yet, it's uh, basically there's a set of rules, and you'll see here if I go into the event info, you can use Legends, Live Series, Spring Breakout, Pipeline, Season Awards, Tops Now, The Show Classics, and Team Affinity Season 1, Chapter 2 players. All right, anyone outside of that, I can't use. Every game is all-star difficulty. Every game is three innings, unless it goes into extra innings. And the minimum player overall is 50 overall. Max is 99. Sometimes that changes. They cap it at like 96 or something. But anyway, this one's pretty simple. All right, so we're hopping into an events game, and you can see the pitcher wheel attributes at the top there, the hits per nine, walk per nine, all that, so you can preview that before the game starts. All right, I don't have a lot of good pitchers to start for this game, so I'm actually going to use a bullpen arm. Um, you can kind of disregard that. You'll use a starter for ranked seasons. All right, so we were the away team, and we hit back to back to back to back to back home runs. Five home runs in a row, I think with two outs for each of them. Um, so I should have had that recorded, but I'll, I'll find a way to get that on the recording. All right, so Jackie Robinson, we know he has speed. We know he could probably bond. I'm going to put a pitch outside here. I don't really care if he tries to bond here now that I'm up 5 oh, nothing, That is going to affect the way I pitch. All right, so he took the slider away. I'm going to just go away with a fastball. Oh, that's off the plate. Um, he probably is going to assume a fastball is coming, so I'm actually going to go with another slider here. All right, if you, all right, he's clearly just taking until there was a strike. Let's just test him up and in. It is okay to test guys up and in. Uh... If they don't get to it once, don't assume that they can't ever get to it, all right? I'm not going to try that again for another couple of pitches. All right, so I'm going to go with this Aye! circle change. Um, you, basically, anytime I want to get a swing and a miss, I always want them to make him, make my opponent think I'm throwing something hard, a fastball or a sinker. All right, so a lot of times I use the slider and the changeup to achieve that. And since it is events and the pitchers are losing energy quicker, uh, more quickly than they would in a ranked game, I'm going to warm up my pitchers in the first inning, okay? Uh, so we'll go with Billy Wagner and Edwin Diaz. Like I said, typically you want a guy with a four-pitch mix or a five-pitch mix. 
I really don't like three pitch mix guys. All right, Hank Thompson. So we know he's taking first pitch, but I'm not going to groove one right down the middle. I'm just going to throw it on the outside like Three, I did there. Two. All right, tunneling. Tunneling basically means throwing something, you know, I threw the fastball away and I threw the change up in the same line, the same, I guess, you know, line of view as the fastball, but the change up dips below. So we got him to swing over it. There's also reverse tunneling, or I like to call it that at least, where I'll throw like some like a slider inside. And if he takes it, I'll throw a fastball right there in the bottom right-hand corner. All right, so we threw something sliding inside, and we didn't get him to bite and fish on it. Oh, okay. um, so I'll put the slider down here. If he misses, I'll put the fastball right here. But now we got him down to a two. We're just going to throw a ball. No reason to throw a strike here. No reason to give him anything to hit. All-star difficulty, he's going to um, he's gonna get those foul balls. Now, Hank Thompson is a little bit of a shorter oh, player. So I like to go upstairs above the zone with the fastball against the shorter strike zones because to them it kind of looks like a strike he's not going for it but i guarantee you a lot of players will all right let's go back to that change up on the outside there he's late on it he doesn't seem sure of himself our pitcher's already in the red and we only have one out so that is not good that was a strike he's probably banking on a fastball here but we're gonna see if he's ready for it i mean there's just nothing you can do there like I threw a strike. He got the foul balls he needed. Um, let's put it in a different pitcher. So this is a really unfortunate position. Our pitcher already has the red. So we basically need to sacrifice another pitcher, another pitch, I guess, to get through the next pitcher. He had to throw at least three batters. All right, we know we got a lefty, righty, and a switch hitter coming up. I'm just going to go with the righty so I can save my better pitcher for the later part of the game. All right. We know he took a lot in the first game. I mean, the first uh, inning. So I'm just going to go fastball away there to get a strike. All right, this batter doesn't seem like he's on it very much. He got the fastball right down the middle that he wanted, and he just quit. So let's hop into another game. Slamming my PCI. This guy's name is Slamming My PCI. That's funny. I'm assuming he's going to try to swing away, so I'm just going to throw a ball. ball. Okay, he's not swinging away. Uh, let's go with the fastball up and away because we know we have some velocity on it, and this pitch in particular... You want to make sure you have velocity on it. I missed my pitch completely. All right, that was a dangerous pitch. He was still late on it. All right. Like I said, early on in the game, you can test your opponent. Um, but if they if they get it, know that they can get it. If they don't get it, don't assume that they just can never get an inside pitch or a pitch with velocity. All right, but if you're playing on All-Star, a lot of opponents really cannot Ball face one, a, no a velocity. So he almost swung at that pitch. I purposely threw that curveball down below the zone to make him think that it was going to be a sinker or a fastball inside. And now that we got him to think that, we're going to try to get him to fish again. I'm going to go with the sinker away here. It's kind of a tough pitch to execute sometimes. Like I said. All right, I don't want him to assume that I'm going to throw a fastball right down the middle, so I'm actually going to go with the slider here. Try to get it on the outside part. All right, so we just went from 3-0. We were down in the count 3-0 to getting an out. All right. So don't ever think that you're out for the count. Don't ever just groove a pitch right down the middle. Um, so we got that slider there. He probably thought it was going to be a fastball. He was early on it. Sinker, first pitch away. You can't do anything about that. It's a great swing. This is a part of pitching. You got to give your opponent credit where it's due. That was a great swing. All right, so I'm going to go fastball away here. You just want to move the eyesights around. We pitched up. We pitched away. We pitched down below the zone. We pitched um, right on the corner, right on the side of the strike zone. I don't know why this guy... Did a friendly quit to begin the game. All right, so we got the runs back with two home runs. Um, I'm going to warm up a pitcher. Our pitcher was able to get through one inning, which in a events game or battle royale, that's actually great. Um, so we're going to warm up Billy Wagner, though, and we're going to warm up uh, someone with a four-pitch mix. I don't have any of them. So Lee Smith, he's the lower-end gold player, though. Uh, everyone else is three-pitch mix, so it's going to be tough. But we're going to do F Peter Fairbanks. All right, so we know he can hit the sinker away on the first pitch. He might think that's coming. So if we think, if we get him to think it's going to be a fastball or a sinker inside with the slider, we've done our job. Ball inside. And he almost swung at that. I wish it did count as a swing, but it did not. Let's get him to think we're throwing hard inside again. We're going to go down and in with a changeup. Another tough pitch to execute, but if you get it, it's a really good pitch. And he was early, too early on that. So he was actually very early on that. He is probably looking hard stuff all game. So he's going to swing early every time, any chance he gets. All right, that's a lot of players' uh, strategies. Just swing early and hope that you get it. All right, uh, get a fastball or a sinker. 
Now, when that's the case, you want to just try to trick them as much as possible. So I'm going to go with this change up on the outside here. Try to get it in the zone for a strike since he is taking. And you see how early it is on that. He's only looking for hard stuff. So now that we've picked up on his tendencies, know that he's only looking for fastballs and sinkers. We're going to keep that in mind with all of our pitches going forward. All right, so we have righty, lefty, righty. I'm going to look at their contact ratings. Um, most of them are pretty... Most of them are better against... In terms of contact, they're better against right-handed pitching. All right. So even the righties aren't as good against lefties, so I'm actually going to go with Billy Wagner here. All right, so again, he's probably looking fastball. First pitch. We're going to go slider and make sure we get it oh, all the way inside so he doesn't take a good hack at it. He was looking... He's looking hard stuff, probably there too, because we know Billy Wagner has a fast fastball. Give your, like I said, give your opponent the credit he deserves and know that he could probably adjust oh, if he needs to. So I'm not going to just assume he's only looking for fastballs every time, but I'm still going to pitch that way until he, he proves that he has adjusted. All right, he put in a different pitcher or a batter here because he knows the contact rating is different. I'm going to challenge him here and just see if he's ready for it. And he actually kind of was. That was actually a well-timed swing. Um, had I given him a changeup, he might have pulled it. Uh, but we got, let's just say we got lucky there. All right, now he's doing some goofy nonsense. We got him tilted a little bit. Uh, that was a bad pitch. All right. Let's just assume he's looking for the fastball inside. Get him to swing over this changeup. He did swing, but it's going to be a ball. So <laughs> that's unfortunate. All right. Slider up and away, but I want this to end up in the zone. We get him to swing. His timing was good. So I'm Two always strike. looking at the timing feedback in the bottom left-hand corner to know if I'm fooling my pitcher or my hitter and my opponent with the velocity or with just moving the pitches around the zone. And obviously you want it to be both. Ball, that's out. So he's just waiting for this fastball up and in, I can tell. He's just waiting for it. So let's go up and away with the fastball and see what his timing is. It was actually good. All right, so let's get him to think we're doing that again. Uh, he might have been a little early on that, if anything. He was early on it. All right, so let's go slider below and make him think that uh, I didn't really execute the pitch too well. So last pitch here, 3-2 count, desperation pitch. I'm going to go change up away, Did he go? and we get him to swing. We probably thought it was a fastball. We didn't even get it close to the zone. We got away with a pitch there. That's just how it goes sometimes. All right, but you have the tunneling. You have the reverse tunneling where you're throwing... You know, you're throwing, like, a changeup in one area, um, and then you're throwing a fastball right above it if they don't swing. And vice versa, tunneling, you're throwing a fastball, and then you're throwing, like, a slider or a changeup below it to make them think that they're throwing another fastball there. And you don't have to do it on back-to-back -back pitches. You can tunnel first pitch of the at-bat and then switch yeah. to the second pitch of the, or the third or fourth pitch Hold of the bat and throw it in a different spot. All right, as much as I want to keep Wagner in, he is uh, very low in energy. So we have two lefties coming up after this righty, so we have to be cautious with how we pitch. Make sure we get an out here with the righty up. All right, sliders are very, very hard to hit, same side arm to pitcher. So lefty, lefty, and righty, righty sliders are just difficult to hit. So in my opinion, I think it's better to put your sliders in Whoa. the zone more Damn. than you put them outside the zone, unless you're trying to get a... 0-2 swing and miss or 1-2 swing and miss. All right, this fastball, his strike zone's a little bit smaller, so I want him to think I'm trying to hit this corner up here in the top left. Uh, we didn't do it there, so this time I'm actually going to try to get it. Just because he probably didn't think I was going to go back to the same spot twice in a row. All right, some opponents are just so good that it doesn't matter uh, what they're thinking versus what you're thinking. That up and in pitch um, is always tough to get, but a good player will always get it, so... We got him to fish there on the changeup, but he got the foul ball very early on his timing. This time we'll go with the slider here. Make him think. Okay. He's late on it. It's really tough to work with a three-pitch mix, man. We're going to have to um, we're gonna have to battle here because he has already gotten a lot of foul balls, and now my pitcher's energy is low, and he's going to have to go through two more batters before we take him out. All right. He went fishing for the ball up above the zone. You saw there, but he got the foul ball. Lower energy means more foul balls as well. I think he swung. Did he go? That sucks. This is really unfortunate. Let's go with the changeup away because we haven't tried this pitch yet. And he's getting every foul ball he can get very early on the timing. I don't know how this even works. Let's hope he just pops this up. <laughs> but I was hoping he would pop it up in play, but this man has not put a ball in play. I, I, I can't. I don't know what to do here. 13 pitches in this at bat. I don't really know how to teach against this. 
but we finally got him to ground out on a slider. Uh, oh. Sliders are your best friend in righty righty and lefty lefty matchups, basically. He somehow swung at that change up and put it in play. So, like I said, I don't really know how to pitch with this type of uh, this type of deficit on our pitcher's um, energy. You know what I mean? All right, let's try to hit this cutter backdoor cutter away for a strike. Got him to swing at it, and that's the game. So those are just some of my tips in game. You're gonna have to work and and work your opponent and understand what his tendencies are at the plate. Uh, you don't have to make sure every at bat is a strikeout. Sometimes you have to challenge your opponent. Make sure you do a challenge him. Short of strike zones, throw above the zone a little bit to get them to swing and miss. Uh, throw, you know, on the corners. Change the eye level. Move outside, inside. Try to tunnel your pitches and reverse tunnel your pitches. And uh, that's that's all I got for you guys. If you guys have more tips in the um, you know, if you have more tips, put them down in the comments down below and let's start, start the discussion on pitching. Pitching is very tough in this game. Okay. So like I said, drop a like, subscribe if you are, are not subscribed already and start the conversation below if you have any more tips and let me know of any other tutorials or tip videos you want to see. And I'll see you on the next one.